Welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Alexis Miller, president of the Hopkinton Education Foundation. Welcome, Alexis. I'm so glad you could finally get on the show with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. For, so our, for our audience uh, that will be viewing this and those that don't know you, would you mind starting with a little bit about your background and tell us some interesting facts about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I grew up in Hopkinton and um, spent my life here, went to the Hopkinton Public Schools and left to go to college and then didn't come back for a while. And my husband and I decided this would be a great place to raise our family. So we came back in 2008, um, right when my daughter, my older daughter started kindergarten. Um, we've been very happy so far with the way the Hopkinton's been. It's kind of been interesting to come back to the town. It's completely different from when I grew up here. Um, it's expanded in numerous ways, and one of the best things about it is that the education system has come so far from where it was um, when I was in the school system. It was much smaller then. <laughs> Well, there have been many changes. There yes. will continue to be many changes. Yes. <laughs> we have developments and all sorts of things going on. And at the time we're recording this, uh, the new school, uh, elementary school was approved, up, and yeah. that will be coming, and so lots of new things going on. Yeah. So I'm glad you decided to come back <laughs> and be part of the, the community again. And what else would you like to share with us about um, yourself? Well, I... Um it's a great question, sorry. Well, it's um, all right. You could tell us how you got involved with the so, Education Foundation. Sure. Um, so my dad actually was a first grade teacher for many, many years, mm -hmm. and education was always very important to him. Um, I actually didn't go far. I went to Babson College locally in Wellesley, and um, I always wanted to be involved when my children went to school as mm -hmm. a parent. Um, education wasn't the field that I chose, but I definitely am passionate about it. Um, when I moved back to town, I heard about this new organization that I was completely unfamiliar with. I didn't exist when I was in the school system. And um, it sounded like they did some really fabulous things. So a friend of mine was um, a member there and invited me to join one of the board meetings. Um, Maureen Belger um, has been very supportive of me joining the organization. And uh, she's the one that introduced it to me. And once I learned a little bit more about what we do, I was very excited to be part of it. Um, I love the idea of funding things that teachers couldn't do otherwise mm -hmm. to really advance what the kids can do in the schools. Well, very glad that Maureen got you involved. <laughs> yes. Now you're president of the, of the foundation. Yes. <laughs> so how long have you been involved with it? Uh, I've been involved with the organization. This is my fifth year. Um, I started out just kind of doing a little bit of everything and involved in the grant committee, which is the basis of how we fund things, um, and just kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything and then mm -hmm. got uh, elected um, kind of by default to the role of president, um, which is fine. And uh, I've been just trying to make sure that we continue on with our mission. Um, the, sh the short version of what we do is to raise money for the schools, um, but we do it a little different. The PTA is something that everyone's familiar with, and they're fantastic. They really coordinate all the volunteers and do some really extracurricular exci exciting opportunities for the kids. Um, we do something a little different. We're focused more on advancing the innovation in the classroom, making sure that the kids really are excited to learn and want to learn and are passionate about learning throughout their lifetime. Um, so we are able to raise money to fund grants for the teachers that just really inspire the kids to learn in a different way. So it could be anything as simple as um, a, the first smart board at Elmwood School. Um, it could be something like the clay kiln at Elmwood School. Those are some of the things that we've done in the past. It could be something more elaborate like the digital language lab at the high school mm -hmm. that we funded that really allowed them to learn foreign languages in a different way and have immediate feedback from um, the teachers and actually communicate with people all over the world that are speaking the same language. So there's a, a huge variety of grants that we've been able to fund that are really fun and so it's exciting to be part of that. Well your passion for the organization and what they do clearly shines through so they're very very lucky to have you as the president and I'm sure you're doing a great job and I want to talk more about some of the grants and events and things but I was kind of curious uh, for volunteers because you probably have many volunteers for the organization what kinds of activities do your volunteers help with um, we have a, a huge organizational structure and a really small number of people that do a tremendous number of things. Um, we're always looking for people that want to help plan events. Um, that's probably our biggest thing is, is fundraising for events. Um, we're always looking for people that want to build the community relations that we have to work with the existing sponsors that we have that we're lucky to have and maybe hopefully get some more in the future. Um, and we're always looking for just people that want to be involved in the schools in a different way. Um, our 
um, school liaisons, have an opportunity to build a relationship with the principals and the teachers at individual schools that's a little bit different than the way you would volunteer just by going into the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, that all sounds good. So for anyone who's interested, anyone that's interested getting involved, thinking, be happy to. you know, maybe they, they're not part of the Parent Teacher Association or involved in some other way, this is yep. an excellent opportunity for them. And we'll we put the website up at the oh, end terrific. of the show and they'll so they can go can on do. there and yep. see how they can get We have a lot of people that overlap in both organizations, myself included, that volunteer for both the PTA. It's not, it's not exclusive. We work very well with them. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we've even co-hosted events because um, both, both of us have the same common goal, which is to you know, raise money to give back to the schools in Hopkinton. Yep. And I happen to just, uh, I pulled the vision and mission statement off the website and they're excellent. So I, I mean, I won't read them verbatim right now, but again, for people who want to uh, get background information on the Education Foundation. When they go out to the website, they'll see the wonderful vision and mission statement you have, some of the uh, uh, sponsors, corporate sponsors, yep. and, and how you work with businesses and individuals and the PTA and so many yeah. others to really do a, a wonderful uh, We have been very things. fortunate with our corporate sponsors. We have um, a fair number of them have been long-term, year after year, continually donating to us, which is fabulous. Um, and this year we've had a, a, a bunch of new people that have been joining us to sponsor. I hope that they become long-term sponsors, but the support from the community has been fabulous. Yeah. So we're really appreciative of everyone. Everyone. And for everyone out there viewing this, you don't have to be a corporate sponsor. You can be an individual sponsor. Absolutely. Right? Well, we take anything. There's yeah. um, a ton of, can I talk a little bit about some of the events that we do throughout Absolutely. the year? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so obviously we're completely funded um, by donations, whether it's fundraising through the individuals or from corporate sponsors. Um, and we do that through several ongoing pro programs throughout the year. Um, one of our most popular ones is the Thank a Teacher program. Um, the teachers really appreciate it. It's a, a unique way to say thank you. Um, my dad was a teacher for a long time, and um, the collection of Christmas ornaments and mugs saying number one teacher that we had over the years was tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, but what he really appreciated was when the parents took the time to say, you know, thank you, you've done a great job. I really appreciate what you've done. So we took that um, many, many years ago. Mary Corby actually created the program where we went twice a year um, at the holiday season, and again, at the end of the year, um, we collect money from parents in, in town and they mark down whoever, whatever teachers they want us to thank and we send them a, a letter, the teachers, a personalized letter thanking them on behalf of that student and that family. Um, it's a great fundraiser for us, but the teachers really appreciate it as well. So it's a nice, um, a nice way to both give back to the teachers and do a little fundraising. Um, we have a few other events that we do ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, yearly we have our annual um, we have a gala. It's been in various uh, formations over the last few years, a casino mm -hmm. night and improv night. And this year we went back to the grand gala. Um, and that is our silent auction. And that's probably our biggest fundraiser every year. Um, that usually regularly brings in um, twenty or thirty thousand dollars, which is a big, big substantial portion of our income for the year. Um, we also do a trivia night in the fall, which is a little bit more casual and fun um, that people really enjoy. And then coming up in the spring, um, we do our golf ball drop. Um, which is a lot of fun because you get an opportunity to ride in a hot air balloon, which not too many people have that opportunity to do. And it's all just to, a fun way to raise some money for a charity that's important in town. Lots of exciting events there. Lots of exciting Good events. ideas too, yep. different things, you know, yep. not the. Trying to be innovative. <laughs> creative, very Trying creative. To. Yes, absolutely. So, yep. And over the years, I know that there's been hundreds of thousands of dollars that you've yep. raised and made, you know, yep. grants for different things. We were, a couple years ago, proud to announce that we were donating um, our millionth dollar to the school system, which was fabulous, and that's uh, since the inception of this program, of our organization in 1992. Um, so we're, we're striving to continue to do that and, and do another million dollars in the years to come. That's a lot of money, and it that's is. that's been put to good use. Because you've mentioned yeah. a couple of the things that you've. Yep. I don't know if you want to go into further yeah. any things, more of the things you've done for the schools, but it's been put to good use. We're we're doing some really fabulous things. Um, we do a variety of things from pilot programs where um, a teacher will try something, and you know sometimes it doesn't work, and that's okay. But it gives them an opportunity to explore something that the school budget just can't quite fit in. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't exist, and I don't know that the PTA would exist if there was an unlimited budget for the schools. Um, so unfortunately there's not, so that's where we come into play. And um, we do all kinds of things from 
um, things that turn a pilot program like the Smart Board. We mm -hmm. were funding the very first one at Elmwood, and they took that over. And, and all the classrooms in both Elmwood and Hopkins have Smart Boards now over the years. Um, so it was a, it was fun to see that you know we were the the first the start of a program like that. Um, we do some really big elaborate grants. I mentioned the Digital Language Lab. Um, mm -hmm. We did an innovation lab in the high school last year, which was um, the the concept behind that was really unique. In the 1800s, you saw students sitting in chairs at desks in rows facing the front. Mm -hmm. And then they took a p picture of a classroom from a year and a half ago with students sitting in desks in the classroom facing the front in rows. Mm. Um, so they're basically saying that nothing in the classroom has changed in 100 years. Um, so what they did was put in a grant for a flexible design for the classroom. They had some high desks, some desks that kind of configured together, um, little different groupings so that they can do a little bit more of a collaborative environment, a little bit more of individualized learning. Some people learn better sitting on a couch. Some people learn better at a table while, while they have a whole bunch of people surrounding them talking and, and communicating about something and they brought it into the math one of the math classrooms at the high school and they've been using that and um, we have the port support of the school says that you know in the future if this is really working well then that'll be something they consider when they buy new furniture so that's our goal is to try and do something different that, that mm -hmm. makes the kids learn in a little bit different way makes them excited about learning and then hopefully the school will be able to pick that up and, and carry it on to other students so that's a lot of fun well, I'm just so impressed with the Hopkinton Education Foundation and your leadership, of course, and all of the people that support it. Because, you know, every year I think the community is really good about standing behind the budget for the schools. But you can only do so much through, you know, through taxation. <laughs> yes, um, I agree. And if you want to do the creative things, the innovative things, not that the schools aren't creative and innovative on their own, they are. But it seems like the Hopkinton Education Foundation takes it even a step further, a few yep. steps further. And with collaboration with the teachers and your yep. organization and others that get involved, you come up with these wonderful ideas. Well, we don't actually come up with them ourselves. I'd love to take credit for that. Um, but the way we, we fund things is that the teachers actually write grants. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a grant application. It's If anyone's interested, it's posted on our website to look at. And at the beginning of March, the grants are all due. They have to be approved by the school principal. They have to be in line with the goals of the um, curriculum of the entire school district. You don't want to go in the opposite direction from what the schools are planning. We want to support them, not <laughs> antagonize them. Um, we want to make sure that they, obviously, that the grants highlight um, something different and innovative, something that they're not already doing, and ideally touch as many students as possible um, because, you know, we'd really like our dollars to go the furthest. And those are all approved by the um, principal for each school to make sure it fits with the curriculum goals. We check to make sure it uh, meets and it's compatible with the technology of the schools and, and building and grounds. It'll, it'll fit and work in the environment that it's designed for. And then um, we have a grant committee that meets to discuss them and, and pick the ones that, that we want to fund that year. Um, ideally, we would fund them all if they met our goals. We can't always do that. Mm -hmm. um, we do as much as we can each year, and it varies depending on the year. Some years, um, a few years ago, we did um, almost $78,000, which was a huge amount for us in one year, and some years it's less. Depends on what we receive for grants, and you know, some of them really don't meet our our guidelines, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're trying not to just fill budget shortfalls. We're really looking for innovation um, and, and really inspiring the students. So we're, we're trying to, you know, balance that. And, and uh, But we really appreciate the time that the teachers take to write these grants because um, we wouldn't be able to fund them without them. So. It seems like you've had them across all disciplines, oh, the arts, absolutely. the sciences, you know, yep, technology, some, new, yeah. Some people think that we're focused exclusively on technology, and we really try not to be. We want to be covering everything. Um, we've had grants um, both in several of the art classes um, through almost every school, uh, the clay kiln, the glass kiln, um, a digital art display at the high school level. Um, we were able to do some things for the PE classes. We did uh, skis and snowshoes several years ago that they're still using in the middle school, which was kind of neat to find out a grant from before I was part of the organization was something that my daughter was still able to use in the middle school. So that was fun. Um, we've done things, you know, 
focused on technology and done smart boards and iPads and, and things like that. And then we've done things that are more on paper. They're books or um, there's a grant that's unfortunately no longer in, in action anymore, but it partnered, it was called Writing Buddies, and it partnered a fifth grade and a first grade class so they could have a partner. And, and they actually, it was a, a fun program because the first graders were inspired by the fifth graders. They looked mm -hmm. up to them. And the fifth graders kind of went back and said, you know, I want to do my best to, to really show off the proud peacock to the first graders, and it, it's an opportunity that Hopkinton doesn't have with the way our schools are split mm -hmm. to uh, really have build that relationship between the grades. So that was fun, and it's, that was not technology at all, but it was a, a fun opportunity. It's a fun grant to fund. So. Well, I'm glad you're on the show because it gives you an opportunity and the Ed Hopkinton Education Foundation an opportunity to spread the word on all the good things that you're doing and to get people who haven't been involved to come forward and others to continue their support. <laughs> Uh, but what are the main avenues of communication so that uh, the public knows and the community knows all about the foundation and the good work that you're doing? Um, for special events, we definitely try to advertise in the Hopkinton Independent. Um, we also have our website to disseminate information. Um, and we have a Facebook page, which is probably our biggest um, thing, our biggest pool. We have a, a fair number of uh, parents that are adept with social media, so we're able to communicate in that way to them. Um, but just as a general public, that we have um, reaching out via our website. We have um, all the links for everyone's email address. Uh, the president, communications team, the events team, just general info. You can certainly reach any one of us in that in that way. As far as learning about what's going on, um, sign up to receive emails. We have a constant contact database, and we send out our monthly newsletter. It just tells a little bit about what's going on. Um, grants that we're funding, um, events that are coming up, mm -hmm. fundraising drives. Um, the next one coming up for us is our marathon runner. We were fortunate enough to be awarded a bib from the Board of Selectmen to have a charity marathon runner. Um, Joe is absolutely fantastic. His, both his parents were educators. Um, his cousin lives in Hopkinton, so he's got close ties to the town. He's eager to run the Boston Marathon and raise money to support education, which is, we, we couldn't ask for more in a, in a charity runner. Um, we've been lucky enough to have, uh, we've been able to get two bibs a couple years ago, and then the last two years we've had one bib, which has been just fabulous for us. Well, at the time we're recording the show, the marathon's coming up in a few weeks. Yes. And so for folks who go out to the website, they'll see Yep, he's got know, his Joe's little donation little tracker. Donation tracker. So they can take a look at him and see, learn a little bit about him. He's been uh, keeping us updated on his training runs, which has been fun to watch. I love the marathon, having grown up in Hopkinton and watched it every year. Mm -hmm. I'm not a runner. I think they're all just a little bit crazy. They want to run the marathon. <laughs> No, I think it's fabulous and impressive that you're able to do that. It's, it's not my talent at all. Um, mm. So it's very amazing to me that there's people that not only want to run the marathon, that are willing to raise money for us to do that. So we're really proud of the people that do that for us. Yeah. So everybody go out to the website and yes. look right there on the front page. I saw it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's his name. Send and some money to click Joe. Click on there and donate to yep. support and it. And then when you see him running, cheer him on. Because <laughs> that's not easy to get a number. You know, it's not easy to get a number. number. It is not easy to run all the way to Boston. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so. Something I would never try, but I'm glad right. there's thousands of people who are willing yeah, to do Yeah, it's amazing. It. I love watching. That's one of the fun things about being part of Hopkinton is the marathon. Oh, yeah. So. And it's certainly a good way to get the message out there about all the good work that the Education Foundation is yep. doing. Yeah. Yep. Are there any other programs or events that you'd like to talk about? I think I was reading something where Harvard Business School and the School of Education co-sponsored an event. Uh, so we were lucky enough, um, last year one of the things that we funded was a maker space at both the Hopkins School, which is the fourth and fifth grade level, and at the high school. And a maker space, um, for those that aren't familiar with, because I, I wasn't before I was involved in the Education Foundation, is just kind of a, an environment that is a collaborative environment with all kinds of tools for people to work together or on their own to make things. Um, the maker space at the high school, for example, has a 3D printer and sewing machines and fabric and computers, and it just they come together and you can work alone or you can get feedback from other people and it's just an environment to create in. Um, they have that on a smaller scale at the Hopkins School. It's a little bit more, um, there's no 3D printer quite yet there, but it's, it's to trying to get them involved in the collaboration concept. Um, so the people that were, um, made some things from the makerspace, went mm -hmm. to a Learn Launch conference at, at uh, I believe it was at Harvard. Harvard yeah. Learn Launch, yeah. I had a hard the time saying that earlier. Learn Launch. Learn and launch. Uh, they had a fantastic time there and uh, learned a little bit more about how to make the makerspace in Hopkinton really productive and do what it's supposed to, which is, again, 
exactly what our goal of the organization is to inspire creativity and foster um, the confidence and, and, and passion for learning. And there's some wonderful examples on the website mm -hmm. of the students that have gotten involved and they have nothing but good things to say about the Hopkinton Education yep. Foundation. And their yeah, on our website you can come and take a look at all of our past grants that are on there. Um, some of them we have a little article or video about them. Um, some of them we just have a few pictures. There's just been, it's been a tremendous opportunity um, to really give the kids something fun in school. In the schools, I'm, I'm trying to think of one for every school that I can explain to everyone. Um, in Elwood School, a few years ago, a teacher um, did a Lego robotics program, get them a little started on some basic engineering concepts and computer programming. But they got to use Legos, which is something that the second and third graders are all pretty fond of. So it was a nice way to tie in something that they're excited about to get them to learn something that'll be helpful to them as they move forward in their school careers. Um, we had a new um, STEM program. Um, STEM is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, or STEAM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics, mm -hmm. a STEM program at the center school to get the kindergarten and first graders inspired about technology. And um, there was a STEM bus that came that kind of gave them an overview of things that they had been learning all year long. And we have videos of that. It was really amazing to see the kids look at something and be like, wow, and, and their faces were just so amazed. It was a lot of fun to watch So that. Alexis, you said that uh, all of the proposals for the, or the grant submissions have to be in early in the, in the year and by March? Yeah, March. You, how long does it take the foundation to evaluate those and decide which ones they we, can fund for yeah. that year? The grants, the grant applications are not short. We have to read through all of them and then mm -hmm. discuss it. We meet, um, we go back to the teachers with follow-up questions. Um, so we announce the grants in mid-May every year. Um, I apologize, I do not know the exact date. It's May 14th or 15th no. this year. It varies probably so, It does. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. We, we don't try not to make it land on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Um, and then we announce grants. We send the letters out to award them, and then there'll probably be a piece in the Independent as well to announce them, obviously, on our Facebook page and our website. Um, so it's about two months from the applications being submitted till the grants are um, announced. Okay. And is it people just from the Education Foundation that make up that committee that yes. reviews all of them? Yep. It's a it's a subgroup. We have a, a board right now of about mm -hmm. 25 members. People choose to be on the grant committee or not. Um, it's an, an added time investment because um, mm -hmm. you have to meet several times and, and commit to being able to read through all the grants. <laughs> and uh, so we probably have about 10 people on the grant committee. Um, we go back and forth. It's, a, it's, it's my favorite part of being part of the board is, is being involved in the grant committee. I love seeing the applications come in. I like following up with questions to the teachers that might prompt them to tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. so that it better fits us so we can fund it. Um, and I, I love being able to be part of the decision making for things that will either impact my kids or, or future kids coming up. Well, 25 people on a board, to me that seems like a very large board <laughs> for the Hopkinton. Well, That's good though, I'm glad it, so many people are involved, but that must take an enormous amount of your time to <laughs> be president, communicate with them, keep all the cogs, you know, turning it, and it working. It does take a lot of time. Um, I'm fortunate, my job, um, my, my career job is a little bit more flexible, so I have time during the day and, and evenings to, to work around my work schedule to fit in the Education Foundation things. We have monthly board meetings that we try and get a lot done, and then little groups that do everything. So I'm not doing everything myself. There's no way that I could, um, if I didn't have the entire board support, uh, the people that get involved, there's just no way to do it. So we're fortunate to have as many people as we do. Um, you know, we're not on the, the likes of the hundreds involved in the PTA, but um, we're, we're, we're growing slowly. Um, but we can always use more people, people with new ideas, um, new concepts to try out. We're always looking for different ways to fundraise. Um, and just honestly, sometimes it's just a matter of warm bodies to do some of the less exciting things. You know, right, if someone just, um, volunteered to write all the thank you letters for our gala that we just had, which is just not super exciting to do, but necessary, and it's it's great when someone can do stuff like that as well. Well, I just want to be clear in my head, though, but the the ones that submit the proposals for the grants, it has to come through a teacher, and it has to have been approved, like you said, by the school principal. and the, and the yep. school district. So, so it's teachers, administrative staff in the school. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's even the principal or the superintendent that writes it. So it's got to be somebody that's involved academically in the Hopkinton Public School System. And how do you, is there a, a sheet or something that's part of their submission that's 
shows that they've gotten the yes. approval by okay so yep. everything is there's submitted. Sign -offs and yep there's sign offs for everything to make sure that it's approved by everyone that it's supposed to be okay so. well believe it or not we're almost at the end of the program so I want to make sure I give you an opportunity if there's any last words about the foundation or the work it's doing or the grants or anything we may have not spent enough time on that you'd like to share a little bit more with us um, I just I'm really excited about what the Education Foundation does that's why I became involved um, mm -hmm. and that's why I've stayed involved with it I love that we're able to just do things that teachers might not otherwise be able to do to really inspire the kids in the classroom so I'm, I'm really excited to be involved I couldn't do it without the support of everyone on our board everyone in the town that supports mm -hmm. us regularly for our events and our fundraising and the, com the corporate sponsors that we have um, we just we couldn't do it without all of them so I'm grateful to all of them and I hope that um, just me being here has allowed some new people to learn a little bit about us and in, be intrigued enough to either inquire about being part of us or think about donating. So. Well, once they see the program, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, we have excellent teachers. We have a wonderful school district. Absolutely. But the Hopkinton Education Foundation is just, the, I mean, the PTA and everything, they're all great, but you're the icing on the cake. I mean, it's Thank just you. wonderful that so much work is being done through the organization. You know, and spending a million dollars and all these grants, and there's going to be more. So yes. Thank you so anyway. much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Mary. If you'd like to hear more information about the Hopkinton Education Foundation, visit their website located on the screen below. For everyone here at HCAN, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. You have what it takes. Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? <laughs>